Hi everybody, my name is Fernando and today I'll be talking about a project that we are currently developing here in KU and it's about simulating the accessible area M for ENM and SDMs. First, I would like to go over an example of the BAN diagram and let's say we are interested in, in a plant species that is from the new war and it inhabits um, dry environments, is pollinated by hummingbirds, uh, and has a recent origin. So or G would be this gray area of the planet, and uh, the A area from the palm diagram uh, could be those uh, landscapes that have uh, dry conditions or environments, and or those uh, latitudinal areas that hold uh, deserts. A coarse version of B can comprise areas where we can find hummingbirds or potential uh, pollinators. Um, perhaps we're dealing with a species of uh, a recent origin, um, uh, which I mean, uh, which origin dates after um, the Great um, American Interchange. So maybe our M is restricted to um, North America. And this approach, this conceptual uh, framework would lead or, or modeling uh, uh, of niches and distribution. But what exactly is the accessible area M? So is a hypothesis and it, it consists of the set of sites that have either suitable or unsuitable conditions uh, uh, but in which the species have been able to access those sites during a relevant time period of its evolutionary history. So um, this area is tied to the dispersal abilities of the species but also to uh, its diversification or its evolutionary history. In our current example, we could think that the M of this plant includes most of Western uh, North America with plain, plenty areas that are dry, but also landscapes with um, conditions that uh, are not suitable for the species. But the important thing about this area is that uh, here the absence of the species is meaningful. So when we are um, about to do our models, we need to define specific M's for each species that we're gonna work with. And um, these couple of papers highlight the um, relevance of the selection of the calibration area and why M can be interpreted as, as this area in our models. Some of the key aspects are that the size of M can have effects on the size of the predicted areas by our models, the, the predicted suitable areas, but also that we can get um, significant models just having uh, areas of calibration that are big enough. One other aspect is that we need these, uh, we need to find these amps to be able to compare uh, different models from different species, but also they are really important to make our analysis uh, to assure the reproducibility of our analysis. Some of the current uh, approaches to define M's are uh, that have been used are, for example, uh, rectangles or um, administ administrative areas such as countries and the advantage of this uh, approach is that they are straightforward to, to make and, and are easily replicable. But when we use them, we face the risk of excluding uh, relevant areas for the species since their limits might not represent real ba barriers for um, our species. 
more often you see that um, buffers are used to define these areas and there are different strategies to make them but the important thing about them is that they incorporate some notion of dispersal at least indirectly so here our aim is to develop a, a set of tools that can generate M's or accessible areas for different species through simulations that take uh, dispersal into account. And to do that, uh, our simulations have basically three uh, important assumptions. One is that the fundamental niche is an ellipse or an ellipsoid, so it has a convex shape. Uh, the other one is that this fundamental niche doesn't change uh, in terms of the time while the simulation is done or that the fundamental niche is conserved uh, and generally that's the case and the, the last assumption is that there's a positive relationship between the proximity of uh, the proximity to the center of the niche and the abundance of the populations that inhabit those sites that are close to the center. Here uh, I present the workflow of the simulation. Um, as you can see, there are similar inputs that we use uh, for ENMs and SDMs. So we start with a clean uh, occurrence data set as you've been um, seeing in previous classes and with environmental layers which are uh, which represent esnopoietic variables um the first step is take is to take these occurrences and, and these environmental layers and do a principal component analysis uh, that helps in reducing the dimensionality of the variables and with that uh, an ellipse or an or uh, ellipsoid of 95% confidence is uh, built and that is our first estimate of a fundamental niche and we take that and we project it in geography and create suitability layers for each time period that we're gonna evaluate so before starting each replicate of the simulation we take a random subset of 50 percent of the occurrences and those are the initial populations in each replicate and during each uh, simulation or each repli replicate of the simulation there are two matrices that are created uh, one is uh, a d matrix which is which consists of the cells that are, are accessed by dispersal and the other one is a c matrix which consists of the cells that are colonized um, at the end all the the d matrices for of, of all the replicates are average and the lower tail the distribution of that um of, of that uh, average matrix is uh, excluded and we define or we obtain or hypothesis of them so um, let's take a look of an example this is uh, a Felocoma ultramarina which is a scrub jay endemic from Mexico and as I said before we start with a set of occurrences that we obtain from uh, a data repository like uh, UBF uh, we clean that data set and we select a set of SNR-poetic variables uh, in this case uh, the bioclimatic working variables so our first step is to take these uh, variables and do a principal component analysis and with that we uh, go to our second step which is we project those uh, I mean we plug uh, here the first two principal components and we create uh, an ellipse in this case uh, which centroid is the mean of the of both uh, principal components 
and to um, define its shape we its shape sorry we use the uh, variance covariance matrix so this is one of our assumptions when where we think or we assume that the niche uh, has a convex a convex shape and then we create suitability suitability layers um, in each time that we plan to evaluate or to simulate uh, or uh, the dispersal movements um, basically uh, using the Mahalanobi distance to the center um, so here's our representation in the lower panel in which we see uh, a binary representation of suitability um, of the present for ultramarina so how do we simulate this person let's uh, take a, a portion of the suitability layer that we saw before here represented by uh, that tiny matrix uh, named s and in that layer suitability values go from 0 to 1 so dispersals will move just from uh, occupied or colonized cells and at the beginning of each simulation we define uh, a series of initial populations in this example uh, just the cell cij is colonized so uh, dispersals will move from that cell will access all our cells and in this case that mm, particular cell has a high suitability value represented by a yellow color and the movement is calculated through uh, polar coordinates where the angle delta is random and the distance d is extracted from uh, two possible kernels either normal or log normal then um, the new position of the access cell or the position of the access cell is just calculated by the sine and the cosine uh, expressions at the end uh, of each replicate a matrix d uh, with all cells that were accessed by dispersal is obtained So this is this simulation is an interplay between dispersal and colonization, and there are a set of parameters that the users can define. Uh, for example, the number of replicates, the standard deviation of the dispersal kernel um, in our framework, the mean of the kernels is set to zero by by default, uh, and that translates in that in the fact that dispersers are usually don't go out or that far uh, of the cell that uh, from which they disperse so it's usually they disperse to neighboring cells and uh, also the users can define the number of dispersal steps for each replicate and an important parameter will be the maximum number of dispersals per uh, dispersal event and um, that uh, is tied to one of our assumptions which is uh, the distance to the niche center so if a cell here um, we have an example in in matrix x s sorry where we have three cells with different values of suitability and if we set uh, the maximum number of dispersers um, to two um, what that does is that divides the, um, the space of suitability into intervals so from cells that have um, suitability uh, values greater than 0.5 two dispersers will uh, move uh, from cells that uh, have suitability values less than 0.5 uh, just one dispersal will move so in the first step where it says dispersal starts in our uh, initial C matrix we have three occupied cells or three colonized cells uh, from those cells uh, uh, a total of five dispersals will move in a second step those 
cells are axes and a record of that axis is is kept in the D matrix and then the the C matrix in the next uh, step is updated and those cells that have conditions that are within the niche ellipsoid uh, are colonized and those are outside the niche are not colonized and this is repeated uh, as many times as dispersal steps are defined and at the end as I mentioned before we get uh, a cumulative matrix of uh, cells of a cumulative matrix of access cells so if we have um, climatic layers from from the past for example from the last glacial maximum here uh, with this approach we can generate uh, interpolations between the past and the present uh, suitability layers for all those periods so the simulation can be uh, executed through these different periods and uh, where suitability change but the fundamental niche is conserved and this is or this represents or uh, other assumption and there are a set of parameters that can also be defined like the length of uh, the period the time period and the number of interpolations we uh, wish to define between past and present um, finally the cells um, that are colonized in a time period can face extinction and, and the idea is that if uh, a region presented suitable conditions in the past but in posterior time uh, scenarios or, or in, in newer scenarios uh, those conditions change and this, those sites have uh, conditions that are outside uh, the fundamental niche the populations uh, or the cells or those cells that were occupied previously uh, phase local extinction or ext extirpation at the end uh, what we get is a matrix of frequencies uh, projected in geography of course uh, for each replicate and the average of all those matrices are is obtained of all those D matrices and the lower 5% of the distribution is excluded So this average matrix is binarized and a shape file is generated and that constitutes our hypothesis of F which includes suitable and unsuitable areas. Other main outputs of this framework are a principal component analysis on climatic variables and those principal components can be used in our ENMs or um, SDM exercise. Uh, a preliminary estimation of uh, the fundamental niche which can be informative but also uh, we uh, um, within our framework we can mask uh, the variables either the raw variables or the principal components with this uh, new calibration area this shape uh, to prepare them for uh, our modeling exercises this approach represents a step forward to include um, dispersal in the estimation of M's and uh, its main advantage is that uh, in an automated way it generates multiple calibration areas with different parameters um, that allow us uh, to model different species. With that I would like to thank you for your attention but also thank my co-authors Marlon Cobos and Tom Peterson uh, which were fundamental to the developing of, of this set of tools uh, please remember to send your questions and i'm looking forward to see you um, in the next friday thank you very much